in my career, I would do a lot of commercials. You know, you do commercials. And you, you'd go to these building places throughout America. I'm like, okay, we're gonna do a, a Dirt Devil commercial here. We're gonna do a photo shoot here. Hi, baby. And, th and this reminds me of, this reminds me of it because it's, it's a little bit of everything. It's very innovative. Anytime you go to those places, it'd be like a kitchen, but a make-believe kitchen. But, <laughs> and, then, and then over here would be like a, like a garage. Like and then over here would be like, it was just a place to shoot everything. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's like a furniture store in here. They got the little setups of random yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, everything in here is like, okay, there's a hutch, then there's some lights hanging. <laughs> and then we and then we got you know it's, it's it's just everything it's very innovative okay that's now was that harvick or uh junior harvick this is the shirt i wear on, on my youtube shows right there i wear that hey, what was the story behind those trading cards with the the rifle and the cowboy hat and so, stuff <laughs> so um what year was that 19 93, I think it was 1993, Jeff Gordon, myself, and Bobby Labonte. Everybody's got like a um, a fad or a scheme or skit. So they wanted, to, they were calling us the young guns. <laughs> <laughs> we were the young guns. So uh, they put Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte, me and we were going, all going against each other for rookie of the year. Of course, you know, Bobby Labonte doesn't win Rookie of the Year. Neither do I, obviously. Jeff Gordon does. So there's, there was a thought that that was the strongest rookie class, class in history. It just even take Richie Bickle was in that class. So there was really four or more of us. But uh, if you look at the Jeff Gordon rookie class, it was Bobby Labonte, Kenny Wallace. There was a thought that that was one of the strongest rookie classes ever. It had to be. And we, and we were the young guns. And so they put us in cowboy hats and guns and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but funny. it's still cool. Well, I you guys collected got... a bunch of those cards with you in the cowboy hat with the gun. I think I have like four or five of them. Do you? So they were funny. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You're kind of like, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I know this is going to shock you shock and maybe you. This is how old school I am. This is basically the old Mark Martin logo. That's what I made that off From of. Batesville, Arkansas. Yep. And I know that. And one of his race cars, early in the going, that was on the, on the door of his race car, that exact logo. 78. So that's pretty awesome. Some people make a mistake and you don't know you're making a mistake until you get older. You're like, all oh, these old guys think they know everything. I'm like, no, old guys don't know everything, but they've seen a lot. And so because I'm of age, I remember that being Mark's logo. But somebody, somebody that would be, ten, you know, five, ten years younger than me, they wouldn't know that. But I know that. Oh, Kenny Wallace postcard. Look here. We got that hung up. Yeah. Two two things happening here. That's awesome. And this car saved my career. So, yeah, when Steve Park got hurt, when Steve Park got hurt, I got in this car. Set quick time at Rockingham in this car, in the cup series, and led the whole race in the cup race. And at the very end, Joe Nemechek driving for Andy Petrie, they pitted. And then when he came out on new tires, he made about 20 laps, about two seconds quicker than me. And then when I pitted, I was catching him, but then the checkered flag fell. Back in the day, they called that short pitting. And, uh, Look at there. Yeah. Oh, there's there's that. Yeah. The, actually, this car had that logo on it. But there must have been a time where they didn't. These are really nice die cast heavy. I wonder if that door is from one of your cars or Steve's. I don't know what yeah, year it's from. Know. I don't know that you'd have to check with from a hit. Uh, so I ran that I that was 2001 Rockingham at the very end of the year, because Steve got hurt. Hey, I just was with Steve at Bike Week. Yeah, I watched that video. That's very, yeah. And we just picked up all that sheet metal and that desk like two days ago, that's Here, why it's here's, all. Here's what's crazy. <laughs> okay, so I'm a backup driver in the one car, and it goes really good. Now, I'm at 
Nashville running the Bush Grand National car. And I'm running, the caution comes out. And my crew chief goes, Kenny, Mike Helton, the president of NASCAR, wants to talk to you. I'm in my race car. <laughs> hey, Mike, go ahead. Kenny, would you like to drive the GM Goodwrench number 29 car tomorrow at Martinsville for Kevin Harvick? I don't ask any questions. Yes, sir. Well, that's when Kevin and myself and Delana Harvick, Kevin's wife, we talked about it. That's when Kevin was young and he got in trouble in the truck race at Martinsville on Saturday. And they said, Harvick, when this race is over, we want you at our trailer. So they throw the checkered flag in the truck race and he takes his, his NASCAR truck instead of going back to his pits and getting out and walking over there, he takes his truck, the race is over and drives right up to the bumper of the NASCAR tractor trailer. <laughs> they said, you're out, you're not racing tomorrow. You show us disrespect. Mm. So here you are with those two pieces of sheet metal. I drove that car and I literally drove that exact car. And I got a picture in my phone uh, right now of me. And I'm gonna find it cause it's gonna be quick, but that's crazy. Didn't yeah. you wear one of Kevin's fire suits and put tape over his name and write? Here, I'm gonna find it for you right now. And, and, and I fit, I fit, I fit literally right in it. It's crazy because it, it, Harvick is like this long lost brother of mine because when Delana was pregnant, when Delana was pregnant and, and he was driving a Budweiser, Budweiser car, I forgot what car he's driving. Yeah, Budweiser. They put, I was gonna, I was the backup driver. So if she was gonna have the baby, he was gonna get out of the car in the middle of the, of the July race at Daytona. And uh, I just find that stuff crazy. Here it is. There I am. Let's look. They took and put the Herminator on it. So, <laughs> so, so there I am. Look, there's the hat, 29. Ain't that crazy? Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's proof though, right? Because some people call bull. But there it is. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. It's such a cool picture. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's driver's that's introduction. Awesome. You know, it's like, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, they made me start last, and then I got into it with Skinner, and instead of having a, a, a bolt in the sway bar, they had a pin, and the pin fell out. Mm. Had to run the damn race with no sway bar. <laughs> damn it. Oh, look at her, leg speed. That's big. Won Darlington, won the Southern 500, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that was big. <laughs> you got one of those, don't you? What's that? An old Yukon. Who doesn't? <laughs> that baby's legendary. I made a big deal out of that. I, 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 I think mean, I mean, mine's got 180,000 miles on it, but people tease me because obviously I can afford something really nice, but it's got 100% power steering, that's what I like. What are you doing here? Putting a blower, blower on it? It's got a turbo. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> Blah! My dad bought this thing new in 2003 and I rode around in it when I was a little kid. That's exactly what mine is, 2003. Really? Yes. That's funny. Yep, it exactly 2003. Looks just like it, except it's black. And I just, I just, you know, I'm into right sizing now. Just, I don't need everything. And I got my Toyota pickup truck and it's perfect. And it's nice, but now I'm hauling because I've right sized. And so I just, I leave it hooked up sometimes and just drive it. I love it. Yeah. I like how you guys got your souvenirs. Kim, Kim, my wife is wanting to sell trinkets because we got a great souvenir company, Race Ranch. But sometimes Kim might want to sell some small items, you know? What's that? People will buy it. Why not? Yeah, right. Well, she needs tips on operating a Shopify site. We can help with that too. Yeah, because I think that's the only thing that held us back years ago was the credit card part, you know, and the. Of course, she sells her wreaths now with the credit card. You know, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you know, you had to set up the shop like you guys have done. You guys have done wonderful. But it's always just. You know, everything for the first time is like, you know, how you do it. And, yeah. Well, what's, what else is in here? Everything else. 
Look at you guys. What are you doing here? Now this is unbelievable. Like Suburban. <laughs> that thing is getting that engine. Holy moly. So you know what that reminds me of? What? Watch my face. Putting that in there reminds me of this. <laughs> <laughs> This reminds me of Joe Rudy, Al's auto service. He ain't afraid of anything. He'll, he'll, he'll change the motor, and I mean, just boom, it's off. She painted the whole underside of the I body. See that. You're patient. <laughs> Good job. You know, the funny part is, I paid $1,800 for this thing. $1,800? It didn't look like that when I bought it six years ago, but. It's basically everything we've bought for it. it costs more than that vehicle did, so it's kind so of funny. So this is a, uh, this like 2000, early 2000? 93. Ah, 93, <laughs> my God, I'm way off. It didn't change much then from. Uh-uh, it didn't change the, until 2000. That little boxier looking. That's, the wheel covers are boxy. Holy moly, tell me about this. I don't know anything about this. That is a flood car. The, I'll be damned. the garage. Did you get a Louisiana or something? Well, I, I grew up around that car too. That's an interesting story. The garage I learned how to work on stuff in where I built the Escalade was owned by the guy that owned that car. Legendary. And he, it was his dad's car and then his dad died and he had it. And in July of 21, he went to Detroit with it and got caught in a flash flood and it got totaled. And he told me that and I said, well, don't let them take that car, find out what the insurance buyback is. I want it. So. A Rolls Royce. It has no interior and it smells horrible. It was full of mold, <laughs> but it's oh, there. Oh, you never cleaned it up. I mean, oh, we, we took it all out, but it's still not like clean, clean yet. Those tires. So when I was a kid, I raced little AFX cars. And that's what those tires remind me of. It's so awesome. I'll tell you what, this, this shop here is just a tour in itself. Look at that. So we got our floor pan in the way. I can pop the hood on this one. This Fine. is a fun one. Look at that. All kinds of old posters and things to hang up. I didn't hang these up because I didn't like them. Ah, <laughs> oh, be damned. Look at that. Oh, man. Look at them pipes. Damn! <laughs> I built those headers. No! So you fitted them up and then had them all... You weld them yourself? Yeah, that was. those were the first headers I ever made. Oh I, my God. I was 22 when I did all the fabric I had no this. idea that you were that good of a fabricator. Most people don't. That's really impressive. I can't do that. Brody could. I'm just a welder. <laughs> I had to make the headers and I made the intercooler from the bare cores and I had to be damn. build it in there and I took, wow. the, took the grill on and off to make the pipes kind of like point towards the middle and look all nice when it was put together. This I, thing is what I, got me connected with Mark Martin. I'll be darned. That thing is just completely badass. It's funny, it looks like it's a... It looks like it's a, a boat. You know, if you look at it like this, it looks like a boat motor because the pipes go back. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. LED lights? Is that what the... What? Yeah. Those are just like those rings. Yeah. From when I was like yeah. 19 or something. They don't even work anymore. What, what do you use this for? Exhaust. Oh. All the exhaust on the escalated aluminum. You know, that's my type of oatmeal. I eat a lot of oats too. I soak my oats overnight and eat, put blueberries in the morning in my milk. So is this your baby? Yeah. Look at you. I haven't touched like that stuff yet, but the, the inside is like uh, my current project. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Wow. I haven't is that the floor pan over yeah. there? I haven't helped at all. She's done all of this. You just don't, you're a tomboy a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Thank you. It's like, 
when I got the car, I didn't know that it was as bad as it was. Oh. I knew that that floor pan had to be replaced, yeah, like, I... like the passenger floor pan. But once I tore the carpet up, there was like three floor pans on the driver's side and they weren't even welded in. Like they used tar to like make it look oh like it. Oh my God. The underside was painted nicely, so you couldn't tell. I just saw the bubbling through the carpet. So, like, we would have never known unless you tore the carpet out. You know what's amazing about this? This is really a good lesson in, like, kind of like a uniframe almost, like, to where the front clip, I guess, is, was that tack welded to the floor plan, pan? Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. when, when I look at it, I mean, it's just, I, I see all your pictures because I'm on your channel and I see the pictures and I just, I was just kind of looking at it, but I did, now that I'm sitting here in real, it's pretty wild. It's like overwhelming because I've never done anything like this and with the unibody car I'm like scared to, <laughs> to mess well, it up. Well for you just to get rid of all the tack welds and, and, and get rid of it, oh my god, that that's just a big deal. Wow. Where'd you buy this at? Uh Virginia. Virginia. What year is this? Sixty seven. Pretty good. Ain't no bondo in it? I'm sure there's some somewhere. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere, but I haven't found it yet. We love you. Pay attention to me, Mom. She's needy. Nice little welder, welder work. Them welders are getting better and better. That's a plasma cutter. Plasma cutter. Yeah. Never used one before. I, I got a, uh, I had a plasma cutter, but like the welder I take to the race shops are about, are two. The welders that I take to the racetrack is about that size nowadays. It's crazy how fast time goes. That's from a 2002 Talladega car. Have you had Have you had Michael Walsh in here? No. no. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, Mark gave me his number to ask about doing a video with him. And I don't know if it was the current number or he just didn't want to do it because I never heard anything back from him. Yeah. Some of them, oh, look here, the Herminator. <laughs> That's Kenny Wall ass. Kenny Wall ass. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see. <laughs> now a Snapchat. Hold on. Hold on, this is going to be good. You got Rusty over there, too. Right. <laughs> hey, Wallace. You ain't got no hair there, but... In real, you do. Would you buy some? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god! You ain't got no hair there, but in real, you do. Would you buy some? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no hair. 